Do you want to play in a band or are you in a band and want to stay in it? This video might just be for you. Hello drummers and welcome to Tim Conley Drums. I've got a very special, important video for you today. Five tips that are very important tips to getting in a band and staying in a band. So five tips to getting in a band and of course staying in that band once you're in it. And these, there's more tips than five. I just narrowed it down to five main ones. In the comments section, you're more than welcome to add a few more of your ideas for what you think is gonna get you into a band and keep you in that band. But these are my top five. Number five is practice your craft. Practice your skills. Now, if you're a kid or a young adult or an old adult, it doesn't matter. If you're young and a new drummer and you want to play in a band, just go and do it. No big deal. Don't worry about your skill level. Just go out, have fun and play in somebody's garage and have a great time. But if you're going to get paid or people are paying to see you, then you've got to develop your skill level. You want to get in the band, you want to do well at the audition, you want to be able to play. You don't have to show up looking like Neil Peart, but you need to show up and show that you can play the songs. You can stay in time, your meter's good, your feel is good, you play the right fills, etc., etc. So make sure that when you show up to your audition, you got the skills. Now, if you're already in the band, one of the complaints that I've always heard over the years from teaching literally thousands of drummers is that they'll say to them, oh, the band's complaining that I can't play this song or uh, the band's complaining that um, I can't play a certain fill or whatever. So if the band starts complaining about something you're doing, you got two choices. You can quit, which I don't recommend. Don't quit improve your skill level. Go and take some lessons. Go and listen to the song and try to figure out what the fill is. And if you can't figure it out, YouTube it. Everything is on YouTube. Or what I highly recommend the most, like I said, first, seek out a teacher that is familiar with this, uh, the style of drumming that you're doing, and he or she can help you to accomplish the goals that you need to accomplish to stay in the band. Number four, play music that you enjoy playing, but also you're gonna run into situations where maybe you don't like the songs. I can remember playing in an Italian wedding band, and it's not that I dislike Italian music, but I was unfamiliar with all of the songs. Plus they were in an all in Italian, which I don't speak, so I had no clue what the singer was even singing about, except for when she would say La Amor, which I believe is love in Italian. So <laughs> a lot of love songs in Italian music, which is amazing. And the music is actually really beautiful, but I didn't have a clue what was actually being said. Why was I in that band? Well, the band paid well. I'm a professional musician. Sometimes you got to sacrifice your tastes to play music that pays the bills. Okay, so that's the reality. There's always an A and a B throughout these five tips that I'm giving you. Okay, there's an A and a B. The A is more for the amateur, the beginner, and the B is going to be for the um, high level amateur and the professional. Okay, so you, what I do is I play in a band that I really, really enjoy the music. I play in a 90s tribute band and I love all the 90s music. I love the crowds. We play, people love to hear this music. I'm having a great time. I'm really enjoying it and I'm loving it. That is the ultimate. But I'm also playing in other bands where I'm subbing in don't necessarily love all the songs, but I'm trying to make a living. That's the B part, the professional part. I'm trying to make a living, I'm sucking it up. I mean, I've played in so many bands over the years where quite honestly, I didn't like half the tunes, but the audience likes it, the crowd likes it. They're dancing, they're having fun, 
and I would have fun because they're having fun. Maybe I didn't exactly like the tune, but let me tell you something. You can despise the tune, but you're still playing drums. You're still having fun. It doesn't matter what the song is, you're playing drums and have fun and you're having your passion revealed to the world because the world gets to hear you play. So that is the best, best thing. All right. Number three, learn the songs. I couldn't tell you how many times I've heard complaints, not about me because I always learn the songs, but I've heard complaints from bands, uh, often a lot of my students telling me that the band is complaining that they're not learning the songs. <laughs> Zorro the drummer who I studied with, who played with Lenny Kravitz, I remember him telling me that you need to learn these songs top to bottom. You should know the songs better than the artist that wrote the song. I agree with him 100% and that's what I do. I learn the songs that I play so that I know the structure well. How do you learn the songs? You have to study music. Once again, get yourself a teacher. Understand what's an intro, what's a verse, what's a chorus, what's a bridge. What do I play when I'm changing from the verse to the chorus? What's the drum fill? What's the groove? Blah, blah, blah. Now, if you're not going to get a teacher, not all of us have time or finances to get a teacher, you can Google this stuff or you can watch it on YouTube or Old fashioned, go out and get some DVDs, drum DVDs, and watch what professional drummers are doing to learn their craft and learn song structure. That's the problem I see with a lot of young drummers. Yeah, they wanna play drums, and they can play drums, but they don't understand music and they end up getting lost in that repetitive chorus outro when it's playing over and over and over and it's singing the chorus over and over. When does it end? When does it end? Well, you need to understand phrasing and how songs work and you'll never get lost. I never am the drummer that shows up at the rehearsal or the gig and doesn't know the songs. Always be prepared. Don't be that guy. <laughs> Number two, have good and reliable gear and a good and reliable vehicle. So let's talk about the gear first. You don't have to spend a ton of money on expensive DW drums and high-end Zildjian and Peisty cymbals. You can get yourself lower quality drums. These drums here are nothing special, but they are great drums. They're inexpensive. These drums are Yamaha Stage Customs. They cost about $1,200 for the five piece. And I'm, I am using good cymbals though. I have to admit my cymbal quality is of the highest quality. I like Zildjian and I like Sabian cymbals and I like Sabian HHX specifically. That's my favorite. As far as Zildjian goes, I love A Custom and I also like the dark uh, Zildjian Ks. Those cymbals are amazing. Now they are expensive. You don't have to necessarily go expensive, but just get something that sounds good to you. The other thing is you can take cheap drums and put new heads on them. So continually providing new and clean heads to cheaper quality drums, you can still get a good sound. You got to learn how to tune drums though. Very, very important that you learn how to tune drums to get a great sound. The audience isn't going to know. You're, you could be playing a crappy old Westbury kit from the 70s or you could be playing a brand new DW kit. If you tune them up properly and have good quality heads, the audience is not going to know the difference. Only the drummers in the audience are going to know the difference. <laughs> but honestly, in an audience, typically 99% of the people are not drummers and probably 90% are not musicians. So you're, deal you're, you're playing to an audience that has no clue about drums, drum heads, or even music. So don't worry about it. Don't worry about buying expensive gear, but get reliable, good gear that isn't gonna break down, that isn't gonna fall apart. You know, your hi-hat clutch breaking on you, your big bass drum pedal spring flying off, your bass drum head breaking, which I broke a bass drum head at a gig last week. It's only the second time after thousands of gigs that I actually broke a bass drum head while I was playing. 
unbelievably, the audience was, and my bandmates were very cooperative. They understood, what can you do? I broke the head, had to take time to put a new head on the audience, and my bandmates were very, very uh, understanding. So I uh, appreciate that immensely. Okay, now we are down to number one. This is vitally important, vitally important. Do not be a dick. <laughs> be a good bandmate. If you're auditioning, don't walk in there, start calling shots. Yeah, we should do this, we should do that. We should play this song, play that song. Ask questions, not a problem. But don't be arrogant, don't be cocky, don't come in playing like you think you're Neil Peart or Keith Moon. Don't do any of that. Show up, be courteous, be polite. Don't be drunk or high. Very important. I don't care what band you're auditioning for, show up sober and ready to play. The other thing is, don't get drunk and high and act stupid at gigs. The quickest way to get fired out of a band is to show up at a gig, get drunk, either you're show, drunk when you show up or you get drunk during the show and then you play terribly. You're gonna get fired, guaranteed, even if it's an amateur band that's just playing in somebody's backyard party. It doesn't matter. Take your craft seriously. I've never shown up at a gig and gotten drunk. Actually, once. I did that once because I was quitting the band because the singer was really annoying me. <laughs> I was quitting the band and I thought, ah, to hell with it. The funny thing is, even when I was drunk, he didn't notice that I was making mistakes and not playing my best. It didn't matter. You know, he didn't even notice. But 99.9% .9 of the time, I'm showing up at studio sessions, I'm showing up at rehearsals, I'm showing up at gigs, and I'm ready to play. And I'm a good bandmate. The other thing is be friendly, have fun, be a good bandmate, be courteous. You know, like as drummers, we're always carrying gear, but I've oftentimes helped the guitar player carry his stuff in, helped the bass player carry his stuff in, helped um, bring in the PA system, whatever. Be a good bandmate. You know, if you're going to show up, don't just bring a, 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 a couple drinks for yourself if you're at rehearsal. Bring four or five. Give everybody a drink. Be a good bandmate. It goes a long, long way if you can get along with your bandmates. The number one reason bands break up is because people are dicks and they don't get along. Try and get along. Now, I realize that there always is going to be difficulties. But you've got to be understanding. Let's say it's, we're playing your favorite song and your favorite song is Back in Black by ACDC. The singer says, I can't sing that song. He can't get the right range. He can't get the right key. Even dropping the key a half step or even a whole step, still can't get it. It's a very hard song to sing. It's an easy song to play on the drums, but it's a hard song to sing. It's your favorite song. I want to play it so bad. Singer can't play it. What are you going to do? Are you going to quit? You shouldn't. It's a pretty crappy reason to quit a band. You, this is where being understanding comes in and say, maybe we can do it, but we could do it differently. We don't have to sing it exactly like ACDC. Or you just say, okay, maybe we can't do that song. Let's try this Tom Petty song. And you guys can collaborate and you work it out. In my 90s tribute, we had to come up with, you know, 35 songs for an entire night of performing. Some guys pick different songs than me. It's part of the process. You can't always agree 100% on all the songs. But sometimes guys would say, hey, what about this song? Oh, I forgot about that song. That's an awesome song. So sometimes it's good and bad. But you've got to be able to be approachable, easy to work with, and yeah, that's a great song, man. You know, it might not be your favorite song, but the guitar player loves it and he wants to sing it, let's do it. So that's cooperating, that's what's gonna get you in the band, that's what's gonna keep you in the band. And it's vitally important to get along to stay in a band. Very, very important. Like I said, you, you're never gonna be in a band like ZZ Top or Rush that lasted 40, over 40 years. The only reason Rush stopped is because Neil died. 
ZZ Top because the bass player died. So these guys obviously were able to understand band dynamics and get along for years and years and years. Some bands like Cream, they only lasted I think two years or even less than two years because they just couldn't get along. Sadly, Ginger was quite difficult and he was hard to get along with. Plus he was an addict. So all the things I'm talking about here today, exactly the things I'm talking about today, sadly kill a lot of bands. Addiction, not being a professional, and not getting along. Now, Ginger was an amazing drummer. He had the skill, there's no doubt about that. Incredible, highly, highly skilled drummer. But because they could not get along, killed the band. So you could be the next Neil Peart, the next Buddy Rich. But if you're a dick, nobody's going to want to play with you. Remember that in the studio too. You're never going to get hired by a producer if you're difficult. When you're in the studio working with a producer and you're working with the band, especially if you're hired into the band to play on their songs, you've got to be willing to take direction. That's key. So many young drummers, I want to do it my way and that's it. Well, unless you're Vinnie Colaiuta, you're not going to be able to get those kind of gigs. Nobody's going to want to work with you. Now, even Vinny under, totally understands what I'm saying. He's the greatest drummer in the world, in my opinion. But do you think that Vinny's given everybody a hard time? No. How do you, how do you think he gets so much work? He understands what, what needs to be played for the music. He doesn't overplay. He plays exactly what he does. He does his Vinny thing. That's why he's getting hired because they want that Vinny thing. But at the same time, he plays to the music. So play to the music, not to your ego. Your ego is your enemy. It is going to get you kicked out of the band super fast. Try and get along, play to the music, keep your ego out of it, and you will be successful. Thanks for joining me here today. Those are my top five tips for getting into a band and staying in the band. I want to thank my new subscribers. A few of my new students have recently subscribed to me, and I want to thank you very, very much. I've got a live stream. I'm going to post a notice of that in the community section of my YouTube channel because I'm going to be doing a live stream soon. We're going to do some linear fills, which I love to play. John Bonham and Neil Peart type uh, linear fills and, and some of the uh, some that I've come up with as well single bass double bass you name it It's gonna be a lot of fun. So thank you very much for tuning in and as always keep drumming. See ya